Welcome back, folks. Greg Silverman here, Chief Investment Officer. Come, uh, thank you for coming, joining us again. Another session of Come Learn With Me. Uh, we rate some of the articles we put out and then we do a Come Learn With Me session. This was an interesting one. Inc. General, not uh, investment related. Reading just one and a half books a month will put you in an elite category of super achievers. Americans are reading fewer books. Leverage that trend to stand out, get ahead. All right. Americans are reading fewer books than they have in the past. That's not great news, of course, but it does give you an easy way to stand out and get ahead by simply reading a few more books than average. According to the latest Gallup reports on the state of reading, American, Americans read an average of 12 books a year, a smaller number than Gallup. Then Gallup is recording any survey going back to 1990. I didn't even know Americans read that much, that many books a year. <laughs> While reading books appear to be in decline, according to Gallup, there doesn't seem to be a decline in reading activity among a subgroup of super achievers, entrepreneurs, and business leaders, many of whom read anywhere from 11 to 50 books a year. That means if you simply read one and a half books every month, you'll be far ahead of your peers and join a super elite club of top leaders. Oh, huh. there we go, that's a hack. Uh, avid, avid readers who are leaders usually have a system for reading. They're selective and active. Why? Be a selective reader. Randomly stumbling upon books is a fun pastime, but if you're busy starting a company or leading a team, there's only so much extra time you have in a day. That's why you need to be selective about the books you read. The podcaster Tim Ferriss asked billionaire David Rubenstein how he ch chooses the 100 books he reads every year. Rubenstein said he's selective. For example, he spends most of his reading time in the nonfiction categories that relate to his work and interests, business, philanthropy, philanthropy, politics, and history. Rubenstein donates millions of dollars to preserving historical documents and buildings. I think he might own the uh, Constitution, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> or one part of the Constitution or document. Ask people in your field what they read, listen to podcasts or read blogs by leaders you admire. Look for books that complement your career or passion. For example, when I give interviews or deliver presentations on public speaking and communication skills, I don't recommend public speaking books. One of my favorite books to recommend is Leadership in Turbulent Times by Doris Kearns Goodwin. In it, you, you can learn about Abraham Lincoln's storytelling skills or Franklin Roosevelt's amazing ability to simplify complex arguments. A history book is the best communication book I've ever read. Be an active reader. If you're going to spend precious time reading a book that will make you a better person, then you owe it to yourself and others to incorporate what you learn. Be an active reader, take notes, highlight ideas, decide which concepts you're going to take on a test drive. You'll likely throw out 90% of what you learn, but the remaining 10% might catapult your career. I like that. I read anywhere from 50 to 75 books a year. I have a system for getting the most out of each one. I read them with a yellow highlight in hand. Second, I review the highlights and write notes in a digital file. Finally, if I have the opportunity, I will contact the author to discuss the book or read additional material by the person. Oh, that's a super reader. Most important, especially if you're running a team, be an active reader by sharing the books with others. Together, you can use the ideas you've learned to elevate the group's success. For more than 15 years, I've been speaking to companies around the world, reaching audiences of six, on six of seven continents. Nearly every leader who invites me to address their team reads far more books than the people they manage to. But they don't just read, they share. I recall speaking at a big tech company in Los Angeles and finding out that the author Dan Pink had been there a few weeks earlier. I learned that the company's founder sends out a bi-weekly email with a short explanation of how a book applies to the company. He then invites the author to speak at the company and all employees and major customers are invited. It's difficult to stand out from the crowd, take every opportunity to do so, read a few more books than average, and you'll set yourself apart. There you go, that's motivating me to increase my reading. Guys, if you'd like to know more about who I am and um, what I do in the investment programs, just please follow the links below this, uh, this uh, video and uh, come say hello. Please like and subscribe and join me again soon. Thank you.